Legacy Maker, the All Sports Network. Hello, everybody. Darrell Owen, Legacy Maker Sports Network. Today, we bring you another Legacy Maker Sports Short. And, of course, with me, as always, is the man, myth, and the absolute legend, the NFL expert and college football expert here on the Legacy Maker Sports Network, Mr. Jeremiah Quimby. Jay, what's up, brother? Not much. How, how's it going, man? It's hot. Oh, man, it's it's blazing out there today. I walked out earlier and probably like 90, 95, 96. That humidity is just beaming on people. It's, it's really putting a number on people out there. So y'all be safe while you're out there. But we have to talk about Jay. The top five players for the Washington Redskins that will have a make or break season in 2019. And there's quite a few players that haven't quite lived up to the draw in Washington. And we're going to talk about those players today. And people that, in some people's minds, should have done more while, while they're in Washington. But we're going to give them the top five. And we might as well start the top five out with somebody who's worth a lot of money in Washington, Mr. Josh Norman. Yeah, absolutely. He's the second highest p- paid player. Uh, he's getting 14.5 this year. I mean, when they brought him in, they were looking for a shutdown corner. Now, I know he's not going to have all the interceptions that he had before. His first season there, he had 19 pass deflections. I mean, last year, he had nine. The year after that, I think he had eight. Or the year before that, I apologize. It, it's just not really worth all the money you're putting into it for the production that you're getting, especially with you get three interceptions. The year before that, he had zero. Three the year before that, that's six. So in my mind, you look, you got Quentin Dunbar, who had two last year. Uh, Fabian Moreau, he, he finally got healthy. He had one. Uh You got guys, and, you know, our uh, dude Jimmy Moreland coming in this year, my sleeper for this amazing draft class they got, makes Josh Norman and this large salary his very expendable. Well, you know, Josh Norman, I remember being at the game last year when Josh Norman finally got that first interception, what, since 2000, I think it was 2017, 2016, and it's been a long time since he had a chance, and the Redskins Stadium erupted, and that's all they were looking for is to get Josh Norman back in the game. But he has to have a great season, um, and if the if he doesn't, the Redskins may need to start thinking about, hey, what's our next move here with Josh Norman? Next player on our list, Mr. Ryan Anderson. Yeah, Ryan Anderson, and you know, people are going to give me a lot of flags because I've been kind of blasting him, but. Ryan Anderson was taken in the second round. He was brought in to be a pass rushing artist. Uh, I know that he had Preston Smith in front of him. You got Kerrigan on the other side. Two sacks. That's it. Two sacks. And you account for a 1.4 million on this year's roster. That's not worth it at all. He needs to step up. It's 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 his time to shine. I know they went they brought in Montez Sweat, but make the most of what you got. You know he, what eighteen total tackles. Yeah, I mean you look at Ryan. Ryan's got to be a player that steps up, uh, especially with Preston Smith gone. Uh, we talked about losing Zach Brown, so they lose some really. You know, key veterans on that and that linebacker core, he's going to have to step up. Second round picks, like we said last time, are usually thought of as starters on teams. He's got to step up. Now let's swing to the offensive side of the ball and let's talk about some wideouts. First wideout we got to talk about. Now he just got on the, he just was signed last year, but he could already be on the hot seat here in Mr. Paul Richardson. Yeah, I mean, you know, Paul Richardson has not impressed me much. He was brought in to be the man, and, I mean, he hasn't done bad, but he, he definitely hasn't done great. You, you look at him, he hasn't been healthy all the time. 35 targets, 20 catches, 262 yards, but only two touchdowns. Yep. I mean, 
you go total career, he's got 10 touchdowns. Why? For somebody that had only a limited amount of touchdowns, why did they pay so much? He accounts for $7.2 million towards the cap. Now, last year, we were actually, me and yourself, were at one of the games that he scored a touchdown against the Green Bay Packers when they dropped that, the Alex Smith dropped that 75-yard bomb to start the game off. So we've seen the explosiveness that the explosiveness that excuse me that Paul Richardson can bring to this team. They need that X factor. They need that guy who Russell Wilson relied on in the clutch in some big playoff moments the year before against Detroit. They need that guy to step up for the Washington Redskins. Now we swing to another receiver. This guy has probably caught more flack than anybody on the Washington Redskins, uh, in my opinion, and that's Mr. Josh Dotson. Yeah, Josh Dawson, uh, number 22 overall in the 2016 pit, our draft, uh, had high expectations for him. He's had 78 targets last year with only 44 catches. Now, this is where it gets a little interesting for me because you look at a couple guys taken after him, and I mean, by taken after him, I mean 20 picks, 110 picks, you got Mike Thomas behind him. You got Tyreek Hill behind him. And he's done little of nothing. I think he had 558 yards last year. That is not something that you want from a first-round pick at all. Now, Dotson has been through quite a bit. We talked about the injuries he had in that first season. And then the year the year after that, we saw some promise. Uh, I believe he had six touchdowns in that in that season. And I remember writing about it last year at the beginning of the season, talking about how I thought Josh Dotson could have been could be a pro bowler if he comes through. And it just didn't happen last year. Now, four quarterbacks, that obviously doesn't help the situation. Uh, you know, the Washington Redskins, the Mark Sanchez, the Josh Johnson, McCoy, Smith, having all of that uh, go down uh, it was a little w- rough for Washington. So you, you almost want to give him a pass, but, you know, you need they have to step up. Richardson and Dotson are going to be huge for Washington this year. Last but not least, and uh, we got to go with this guy right here. Um, probably in most people's eyes, can be one of the best tight ends. It, when healthy, is one of the best tight ends in the NFL in Jordan Reed. But the, the key is what you exactly said is when healthy, he has never in his career played a full 16 game season. Uh, he, he, the expectation he's got had four touchdowns in the last two years combined. He had 500 plus receiving yards, which is awesome. But you gotta you gotta keep on the field. You're supposed to be that safety blanket, especially with the way that the Redskins offensive line has went through transition. They didn't have a single. Uh, matching starting five out of one game all year last year. Whew. So you, you got to have that pacifier there and you're paying him almost $10 million and his catch rate, 84 targets, 54 catches. Now you're, there is a big problem there. Now you're really huge on another tight end on that team. And we talk about him all the time in Jeremy Sprinkle. Uh, Jeremy Sprinkle, you know, he got in a little trouble in college. I mean, he was looked at as one of the, you know, top five tight end prospects of that draft class. I just, I would like to see him get more touches. I'd like to, you know, Vernon Davis was picked number eight, you know, a decade ago. There's depth there. Give, you know, save yourself some money, bring some people in. I mean, even you know, Tampa Bay went and got Cameron Bray as an undrafted free agent, and he is one of the top five tight ends in the league right now, and he's stuck behind O.J. Howard. <laughs> nice problem for Tampa Bay to have. <laughs> you know, but what I'm saying, especially you bring in, uh, you got Case Keenum, and, you know, Keenum did good when he was up there in Minnesota. You take him over to the Broncos, so you Kind of iffy on what you're going to get. No, Not a lot of people want to start Haskins straight out. But if you start that rookie quarterback around when you and I think around week six, you got to have that pass fire for him to throw to. You know, they did draft McLaren and uh, Kelvin Harmon. 
which are great rookie prospects, but you you need a proven commodity, you know. I can understand that completely. And now, with if all of these guys come to play this year, this Washington Redskins team could be something special. Well, uh, we we were talking earlier before we decided. You know, Trey Quinn caught nine of the ten balls thrown his way before he got hurt last year. I'm looking for great things from Trey Quinn. I really am. Trey Quinn is, if he can stay healthy, that's the biggest key with the Redskins. You know, if he can stay healthy, I expect great things from him. Yeah, they, they the Washington Redskins cannot lead the league in injuries again this year. You know, I know they, I know Redskins fans have to have their fingers crossed. Now, Jay, before we get out of here on our Legacy Maker Sports Show, I do have one other question for you. Now, is there a player on this Washington Redskins team right now that you would trade? before the 2019 season starts absolutely and it's samaji perine just when he played his rookie year we we thought oh oh man they got this guy he's got that ability to hit that hole make one cut and go and then he gets buried on the depth chart they bring in ap ap has this resurgence you can't be upset with that. They draft Darius Geis, who looks great during, you know, OTAs, gets hurt in the preseason. He's coming back. And then they go and grab, you know, Bryce Love. The, you got a whole bunch of teams I can think of off the top of my head that are running back needy. Why not, you know, turn that into a little bit of, you know, some draft collateral, something. Give the man a chance somewhere else. Uh, you know, uh, there's one team that always pops to mind, and I don't know why, but the New England Patriots. I know Redskins fans are not going to hear that, but I feel like he would work in that type of system. Uh, you know, having guys like Blunt up there before, just a bruiser, could be a nice spot for him, but, hey, who knows. All right, everybody, this is Darrell Owens, Jeremiah Quimby, Legacy Maker Sports Network. This was our top five players that had uh, that have to have uh, a will have a make or break season for the Washington Redskins. Once again, thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate y'all. Make sure you subscribe and thank you, thank you, thank you. We're gonna try to bring you guys more content as the season goes along. Jay, thank you, brother. Appreciate you. God bless.